How can you know you're saved by the Word of God? And you know the Word of God is real by in your heart. It's like, if you're saved, you know the Word of God is real. But how can you know if you don't know? Somebody asked me, said, can you be saved just in case you're not saved? No, you can be saved because you know you're not saved. It's kind of like a lady who lived up the street. She's dead and gone now. She had cancer and died. And she had died for several years after her husband. And she told her, I invited her to church, invited her to church, invited her to church. Her husband was a Lutheran. I don't even know what she was. I think she was Catholic or something. And she said, you know, preacher, she said, I I'll tell you what, just to make sure and make sure that I've done went to every base, I checked all the bases. She said, I went to every church and every religion that I could think of. I said, you never came to mind. Well, well, I've been to every one. I said, no, you haven't. You haven't been to ours. I said, you know, if you just listen to me, I can show you how to get to heaven and you don't have to worry about getting the second base. I can show you how to get to heaven. You don't have, even have to stand that back. You don't have to swing. There don't need to be a pit pitch to you. Why? Because Jesus already hit a home run. That's right. Grand slam. Grand slam all the way through. When Jesus hit a grand slam, He made it to where everybody gets to get in for free. And none of us ever had to stand that back. Amen. In, in, in the game of life, I never had to stand that back. But you know what? At one time, I was on the losing team side. I was on the losing it. I'm standing there in the, in the dugout. We're losing. I'm lost. There's no way we'd ever win this game. This game is played against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did it all. Paid the whole thing. And so, it, it's finished. She said, These things have I written unto you that believe upon the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. I know. I hope you know this morning. Then, you must believe that He's coming back. Look in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, one of my absolute favorite passages of Scripture in the Gospel. In John chapter 14, look at what Jesus said right before He left. Right before He went to Gethsemane. John 17, we find Him in Gethsemane praying right before Calvary, right before He was crucified. But in John 14, He's talking to His disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. You know what Jesus is saying? He said, if it wouldn't be so, I would, I would have told you that. What is it telling us? It's telling us that we can rely on what He said. We can believe Him. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, notice this phrase, I will come again and receive you unto Myself that where I am, there you may be also. You know what I like about this? Paul said it in Thessalonians. He said, The trump of God, the last trump will sound, and the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. You know what? Jesus didn't rely on an angel or some other being or spirit to come and die for us. But they wouldn't have done a sufficient job for us. It would have had to have been done over and over and over and over. And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, one time for all, never to be offered again. It amazes me, these people that believe that you can get saved and then you can lose it, then you get saved again. If you can lose your salvation to get saved again, Jesus would have to come to Calvary again. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us that. The Bible said that He would have to be crucified over and over and over and over. Every time somebody lost their salvation, Jesus would have to die again. But the book of Hebrews said, once forever, never to be offered again. Never. Never to be offered again. And Jesus said, if it were not so, I'm told you. Jesus didn't leave anything out. 
But you know, you have to believe that He's coming. You say, Brother Barry, I believe all this stuff. Well, the Bible said that Jesus said, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Are you ready for the rapture? You say, Brother Barry, I'm saved. I'm ready for the rapture. Well, let me ask you this question. Are you doing what you're supposed to be as a Christian? Are you ready for the rapture? Are you living like you're supposed to do? Are you doing those? Are you led by the Spirit of God? Because I'm going to tell you one thing. If our life is not balanced in the Word of God, if we're not led by the Spirit of God, if our sin is not confessed, if, if we're not living like we're supposed to, we're not ready for the rapture. Oh, you'll go up in the rapture because you're saved. One day, right after the rapture, the Bible said we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. See, here's the thing. There's two judgments. Each one is the judgment seat of Christ. One is the white throne judgment. Now, every born-again Christian that is a member of the church, you've got had your sins washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ, received Him as your Savior, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be judged. But when we stand at the, the white throne judgment, we won't stand and be judged. We're going to stand as a living testimony and a witness to everyone that does not get saved that they had an opportunity to get saved. And when God cast them into the lake of fire for all eternity, we're going to say, Amen. And righteous is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. You say, Brother Barry, is that going to happen? Yeah. When I stand before the white throne judgment, there will be no judgment against me. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Think about it. Why, Brother Barry? Because I'm going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. It's not the same judgment. Study your Bible. And, and when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, who's going to be doing the judging? Jesus Christ. When they stand before the, the white throne judgment, who's going to be doing the judging? Jesus Christ. The Father said, I've committed all things unto Him, even judgment. Jesus will judge everybody. Imagine those people when He looks at them and says, what did you do with Jesus? And they're going to have to look Jesus in the eye and give them an answer. Well, I didn't believe all that. Believe it now. I guarantee you, one half of a second after you're dead, you're going to believe in God, you're going to believe in hell, you're going to believe in heaven, you're going to believe in sin, you're going to believe in the blood, you're going to believe everything that this Bible tells you. It won't take but a half a second after you're dead. The Bible said the rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. He didn't talk to him. Immediately. Paul said the rapture is going to take place in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. How fast is death when you find a being in this body? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, a person is in hell being in torment because they did not receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. You say, does that make God a bad God? No, it makes Him a good one. Because it wouldn't be fair to anybody that had to be saved if you could work your way to heaven. It wouldn't be fair. Our God said it wouldn't be fair to Jesus. Why would He have to die if you can work your way to heaven? Amen. If you can hang on to your salvation and endure to the end, Jesus dying on the cross was a joke. If you can work your way to heaven. And that's what Paul said. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Jesus died on the cross as a joke if anybody can work their way to heaven. If anybody can hold on to their salvation and endure to the end. Well, the Bible says that you got to endure to the end. It's not talking about those that are saved. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Let the Spirit of God show you that. He's not talking about the saved person. He's not talking about a Christian. You know what? A Christian does not have to endure to the end. What do we do, Brother Mary? We enjoy to the end. Amen. How many of us living in America knows anybody in America that's had to endure punishment because they were a Christian? None of us have ever experienced it. There are countries in this world that if you get caught walking on the street like this, you go to jail. Philip and Susan in, in Malaysia. She said, Brother Barry, you can't have a church in Malaysia. You've got to have a business. You can witness to people. You can tell them about Jesus through your business. But if you call it a church, you go to jail. You're arrested. 
She said the police, the religion police come in there. Every once in a while, they come in the thing to make sure that there are no Muslims that are joining in there. <coughs> oh, they'll, 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 they'll execute them. If a Muslim decides to become a Christian, it's his life that's on the line. Why do you think in the Bible, as it's spoken of, that the Jews, Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. If I become a born-again Christian, I'm going to lose my life. That's why they were told to prove to me that you believe in Jesus, you get baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't believe the church was commissioned to baptize in the name of Jesus. The church was commissioned to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But for a person to be baptized in the name of Jesus meant that they were a professing Jew that had become a Christian and had to verbally, outwardly confess that Jesus was Lord because the Jews didn't believe Jesus was Lord. <clears throat> to prove that they were Christian, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If they did, guess what? Most of them had to go into hiding. But they had to prove to the church. You see, it's like somebody comes in here and says, well, I'm a Muslim, but I'd like to join your church and I'll, be a, I'll become a Christian. Ah, wait a minute. you got to get saved first. Yeah. Now, we need to see a change in your life. Oh, yeah, but I'll, I'll change up. Yeah, how do we know that? You come in here, you can destroy everything we have. That's what they were afraid of when these Jews would come in and say, hey, I'm a believer. Prove it. Get baptized in the name of Jesus. If they submitted to that, hey, I believe he's a Christian, he wouldn't have done it. Because he could lose his life for doing that. But if they say, I ain't, I ain't getting baptized, I'm a Christian, but I'm not getting baptized in the name of Jesus, well, then you're not a Christian. That's what it was for. That baptism was to prove that they got saved. It wasn't to, to save them. The Bible said the only way to get saved is through Jesus Christ and His blood. Baptism won't save you. Baptism don't change you. Baptism is an outward expression of what happened on the inside. And you're confessing to the world, hey, I got saved and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to get baptized. Are you ready for the rapture? I hope it's not.